So we talked about this already with the sort command that if we sorted an out an input like this, then it actually gets sorted into something like this. Because what happens is that it's sorting according to the order of the first character and then according to the second character. But that's not the typical numerical sorting we actually want. We want to sort according to the size of the number and that's what we get when we do slash n. So now it's sorting alphabetically. It's apparently still doing that. So that's actually, yeah, let's, let's see if we can figure it out. The question is, the, the answer is probably ra rather that you, would you want to avoid doing that. For most modern commands, you'd probably expect this kind of thing to fail and give an error rather than silently doing something unpredictable. But many of these tools are somewhat older. We'll see in, in the Python session, we'll probably see something about that, that it's often beneficial for things to error out rather than doing something weird when you've got some, uh, some input that doesn't really make sense. Do anyone know, happen to know what sort is supposed to do when there's not a numerical input? The manual page is obviously rather vague on that. So it just says compare according to strings numerical value. So you have to know how it converts it to a numerical value when it's not a numerical. Um, we, can we can probably look that up. But the other interesting thing is that we saw how we could use a bracket to pipe output into a text file. But we can al actually also use a bracket, the other bracket, to pipe input into a command. So we could type something like this, word count slash l bracket my data dot dot, which actually doesn't tell word count slash l to read the file my data dot dot, but actually pipes the contents of that file into word count. So these two things are subtly different in that this one reads the file and then puts the output in, whereas this one gives the name of the file and lets word count open that file. Um, so let's try experimenting with that. So if we just do word count slash l like this, then it doesn't do nothing. It actually stops and waits for your input. So if I start typing, then I've typed two lines of text and then I press control D to actually terminate, then it counts the number of lines that I've typed in. So when you don't supply a, a line argument, a file argument to word count, then it starts count word counting on whatever you're typing and you can terminate with control D. So this was four lines in this case. So what happens when you do like this, then rather than waiting for you to take into some input, then it actually reads the input from the file and then it does exactly the same thing as I just did, counting the number of lines in that standard input. Whereas this counts the number of lines in the file. The file is called test. So that counts the number of lines in two files. Do people see the difference between those two things? The fact that you can do this means that even if you've got a program, even if word count wasn't written to be able to read files itself, then you can make it read file, then you can pipe the contents of a file into it by using this pipe character. So you can actually use programs that were not designed to read files on the content of a file without having to copy paste it, which is also powerful. Perhaps not as powerful as being able to pipe the output, but still quite useful. Yeah, and then the next thing is, there's actually a double pipe character here. So let's try experimenting with whether you can figure out what the difference is between those two things. So if we try to do so echo hello just prints hello. So that means that we'll actually efficiently what we're doing is that we're putting hello into that those files, but in two subtly different ways that we try to figure out what's going on. So let's try that and see if anyone has a, a bet on what's going on. You may want to execute the same command several times in a row to figure out what's going on. And remember you can use cat to see what's inside the file. Anyone want to bet on what's going on? Now I've executed we've executed the second command twice. So that does indeed contain two versions. Whereas if we, yeah, I used less here, but that's if basically the same thing as cat. Um, so if we do that, we can see that there are two files in here, or two lines in that file, sorry. If we do the same thing several times in a row for file one, it still only contains one line. 
So if you pipe into an existing file, you're just going to override it when you use a single pipe, a single redirection character. But if you use two, then you can append to it. Which may or may not be, both things can be useful depending on exactly what you're trying to do. So we want to find the three lines, the three um, files, which has the least number of lines, which of these commands would work. The word count, they're all using word count as we've been doing. Then these three are piping it with a pipe character. This one is redirecting it and then using various combinations of head and sort. Anyone want to venture a guess on one that would work? Yeah. So number four looks right, right? Because that's the syntax that we've always been using, but taking three characters out. This one is definitely the wrong way around because we're cutting out the first three and then we're just sorting. We're cutting randomly according to the name, the first three, and then we're sorting those. So we're not getting the smallest one. We're getting the sorted of the three version of the three first ones in the alphabet, alphabetic order. The first one is just wrong because that's going to put it into a file called sort and then something else is going on. So that's going to end badly. It'd be very confusing. This one is interesting. We haven't actually looked at whether that syntax works. Let's try it out. Yeah. So that doesn't work because this is not a valid way command that you can take, uh, you can give to head. Head is very, head and tail are very basic in the way that they take the first files. There's no way of those take of using those commands to just take line five to seventeen, but you can combine head and tail by first taking off the first four lines and then taking the next lines if you want if you want a subsection of the file to be cut out. So that's the way you typically go about doing a bit of combination of head and tail if you want something in the middle of the file. Yeah. And then there's an interesting command that we haven't used which is called unique, which may come in handy, which can take a file which could contain lines like this and then remove duplicate entries that are right next to each other. Interestingly, it produces something like this, so it doesn't actually remove all the duplicates, but only the ones that are right next to each other. Um, and the question is, why is that? So there are probably two answers to that. So it's, they're hinting that it's probably something to do with what, what happens if you use very large files. So what happens efficiently, if, if you just want to remove lines that are right next to each other that are identical, then you can just take for every single line, look at this, say, is the next line the same as mine line, then remove my line, and then go on. If you actually had to do all duplicates within the file, then you would have to take for every single line, look at all other lines, and then from the next line, look at all other lines, meaning that this will be n to the second power, where n is the number of lines. So that could quickly be a very slow command if you have a huge file with a lot of lines in. Whereas doing it only with the next one is only all of the number of lines. Also, the other thing is that the typical design philosophy for Unix command is to do one thing and do one thing well. And Unique is very good at removing stuff that's right next to it. But if you want to remove all of them, then you have to sort it beforehand. And sort is very good at doing sorting. And it's very easy to pipe things together. So you can just sort the file and then use Unique on the sorted file. And then you've achieved the thing without having to build a sort command into Unique, which is what you would have to do to make it efficient. Um, so that's that's quite typical why you see these Unix commands that are extremely basic. That's because they are meant to do one thing and do one thing well. And then you've got the pipe characters that enables you to chain them together and quickly build programs that do more advanced things tailored as exactly your needs. Right. So we're trying to figure out what happens if we run this command on the contents of this file containing the following data. So we're cutting it, then we're taking, then we're using head to take the first five lines, then tail, and then sorting. So anyone want to walk us to, through, let's try walking through the first step. So what happens? First is that we, we do head, so we get the first five lines, must be something like that. We do tail, get the last three lines. We must end up in something like that. And then we sort them. We sort them, yeah. So the thing is that we sort them with 
reverse. In this case, the R is for reverse. And then we put it into final, so that you put them in, in reverse alphabetical order. So the question is whether they are reversed when you do tail right. So tail will still print them in the same order. It will just take the last three ones. Typically, typically tail is very often used when you've got, say, you've got a log file, so you've got something, some program that's been running for hours and hours and does something, and then it writes to a file, and you want to figure out how far has it gotten. So you just want to look at that file may be very large, so you don't want to open the full file in a text editor and scroll all the way to the bottom to see what it's doing now. Just want to see the last 10 lines. So that's a typical use case of tail. And there's even, there's even an, a follow option to tail, which is quite useful, which means if you've got some program, some analysis program that's writing output to a text file and you want to have a terminal where you monitor the progress of that, then you can do tail slash tail hyphen f on that file, and then it will automatically update as, as the contents of the file gets written. And you can keep, keep track of what it's doing. We're using the command cut, which we haven't seen before, uh, but which actually cuts out from the comma character and then onwards in our animals file. So we get rid of, um, get rid of the dates. These are presumably sightings of animals on, on some specific date. And we get all this, and we get that contents. Now we're interested in which which animal names are in the file. So we've managed to cut out only the animal names. We want to figure out which <coughs> names are in there. Not how many times, but just which unique names are in there. What would we, how would we do, go about doing that with using commands that we've already done, we've already been using? Yeah, exactly. We want to do first sort and then unique, so that we sort them so we're sure that all duplicates are next to each other and then we do unique to remove all duplicates and then we've got the unique list of names. So we've, we've now looked at, um, at, at doing the piping. Um, there might be situations where we need to do the same thing over and over again for several files. As we've talked about, then the, the goal of this example is being able to do analysis on a whole bunch of different text files using, using a pipeline that we're putting together. So to do that, we're going to look at using, using loops to run over the same command again and again with small variations. We're going to see that again when we do the Python after this, how we're going about doing it in Python. But for now, we'll look at, at doing loops in bash in shell scripts.